through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Drop it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic. Hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 233. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today we're going to give you our DVD rundown for the week of February 26th. Mm -hmm. We're about to wrap this puppy up. It's all done. Yeah. March is this week. February is a wrap. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Just like the Academy Awards, which have occurred by yes. now, but we're not going to discuss them because we're recording this in, in the, the past, past and this is in the future. Yes. The magic of cinema. Mm -hmm. And while we don't want to give you all of our incorrect guesses, we also don't want to yeah, give you all our incorrect guesses. But it's, guesses. it's, it's kind of appropriate some ways that we're talking about this. Mm -hmm. We'll get this cat out of the bag because <laughs> a bunch of stuff we're going to be talking talking about today are Academy Award nominees. Yes. So if we're not like the winner of blah, <laughs> yes, blah, blah, true. that is why. Yes. Behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's start with uh, one that has several nominations. The Master. Yes. It's coming out on Blu-ray and DVD. Mm -hmm. This is the one from Paul Thomas Anderson starring uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman, Hoffman and Joaquin Phoenix. Yes. And about, Amy Adams, I believe, as yep. well. Yep. Uh, all, all of which were nominated for Academy Awards. It's the story of, you know, a... A veteran, I think it's a naval officer, yeah. Yeah, yeah, who comes back and sort of gets swept up in this, I guess you would say it's a cult, but it's sort of a, yeah. it was a parable for Scientology, essentially. Is what Somewhat, been. even though the, the original source material it was based on was not actually on Scientology, but because right. the... Uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman's character very much mirrors L. Ron Hubbard, so people just kind of connected the dots right, whether or not that was initially planned. It's still like a very yeah. much a cult oriented. Yes, yes, very much like a cult personality yes. type of thing. And you know, uh, somewhat. I mean, I think the people have seen the film mm -hmm. generally, or at least film fanatics mm -hmm. seem to love it. Yes. I think it's sort of missed on the general populace. But I would agree. I would still say. One thing you got to think about when you see a uh, Paul Thomas Anderson movie is his stuff is so meticulously made. Like him and Wes Anderson, mm -hmm. a few other people are so precise in everything they do in yeah. their films that you really appreciate the process of filmmaking when you yes. see their movies, whether the, they're the most entertaining or not. I mean, especially considering this is the first motion picture, motion picture in 16 years to be filmed entirely on the 65 millimeter mm -hmm. format. Uh, using Panavision System 65 camera, which can be converted into 70 millimeter. Yeah. Uh, the last full length motion picture to be shot in 65 slash 70 millimeter was Kenneth Branagh's adaption of Hamlet in '96. Um, this release is coming out as both a Blu ray DVD combo, and mm. I think there's just a DVD option, mm. which is noteworthy because. If you're thinking about just getting the DVD, don't. There's special features that are specifically to the combo pack. Yes. In terms of special features, there is uh, Back Beyond, which features outtakes and additional scenes, edited the music of Johnny Greenwood, mm. Unguided Message, an eight-minute short slash behind-the-scenes documentary, and most noteworthy, assuming um, this is your bag, yes. they, the combo pack includes uh, Let There Be Light, John Huston's landmark documentary about World War II veterans, which is 58 minutes long nice. in and of itself. So that's pretty much the main yeah. crux of the special features. Yeah. But, you know, uh, I don't know why you'd go DVD over the combo pack. Maybe save a few bucks, I guess. I, but. Maybe if your DVD rack is so crammed already that something double thickness is going to be... Is it even double you, thickness yeah, anymore? You're right anymore. I don't yeah, think they do. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I so mean, shut up and get the Blu-ray spend, spend, <laughs> spend a few extra dollars, prepare for the future, get the extra special features, mm -hmm. enjoy, you know, a master uh, at work. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, moving right along, let's talk about my favorite documentary of last year and one of my top ten picks of wow. the year, and that is How to Survive a Plague, yes. which strangely is only coming out on DVD. No Blu-ray release. Also, interestingly enough, it's currently streaming on Netflix, so if you can't make it down to Scarecrow or don't feel like buying it, you can also stream it on Netflix. It's very worthwhile uh, to take the time. It's about the AIDS epidemic of the late 80s, early 90s, mm -hmm. from the perspective of the organizations that were trying yes. to combat it, which is Get, TAG like, and ACT UP were mm -hmm. the prime prime examples. And it's it's interesting. I mean, I was so young when all that was going mm -hmm. on. I only, oh, yeah. in the vaguest terms, remember that it was a big Almost thing. Almost more hindsight, where you remember yeah. hearing things when you were younger. You're like, I mean, oh, that's what that was. I remember a lot of people dying and stuff like that, but I don't really think I understood Until fully what was going on. Yeah, pretty much, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty much true. Uh, <laughs> well, but, that's for me. <laughs> but... The thing about this movie is it's so comprehensive in its documentation of the the 
the experience by hmm. these people in it. Like they have multiple cameras at every meeting, wow. so you have different angles at every meeting that's cutting through. It's also sort of filmed as a thriller, so you don't hmm. know who lives and who dies because this is going occurring yeah. during a period where people are dying mm -hmm. at Epidemic. massive yeah. rates. And it's it's just it's an amazing documentary. It's really heartfelt, and I I, I wish it. I hope it wins best pick, or best documentary. Mm. Um, I don't think it will, but you know, it's it's an amazing film. Uh, in terms but of you watching this now, will know how yeah, right exactly. or wrong Spencer was. And either way, you should be checking it yes. out. Either way, yes. Um, in terms of special features, it's got a commentary from the director David France, very who's cool. a very interesting guy. Interviewed on this very podcast. We've got so the podcast you, Yeah, if you go check that out, you can check out that interview. Super nice guy, super uh, thoughtful. His uh, film debut, so that's nice. Wow, good for him. Straight uh, to. Um, Academy nominated or winning? Yeah, not too, not too shabby, not too shabby. <laughs> it also has some deleted scenes and the trailer, so kind okay. of a minimalist release, but it's an indie film. Yeah. so you know, what yeah. do you expect from that? And with a documentary indie film, it's like you're just happy to sometimes get a physical copy of it. Yeah, I mean, I guess in terms of the Blu-ray, it's not that big a deal because it's probably not filmed high resolution. True, but you know, still VHS carryover transfers. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, it's 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 like why would you not? Have at least that option. Maybe they don't think there'll be a big enough market mm. for it, but Maybe people if they should win the demand award, it. Yeah. There'll be a re-release. I, I bet you're right. I <laughs> bet you're right. In the world of sort of, I wish it hadn't existed. <laughs> yeah, things that Spencer and Greg don't get or like. Yes. There is Silent Hill colon Revelation 3D. Mm -hmm. This is the sequel to Silent Hill, a movie which I already hated in the first place. <laughs> yes. Based on a video game that I had no It's funny to me in. that it's only the sequel, because I feel I, there's been so many Silent Hill games that I feel like there's been a bunch of Silent Hill movies. Well, it also, it also skipped a whole bunch of years. I think it was mm. like six or seven years between yeah, I think you're films. Right. Yeah, that's so probably was, why I think there's probably just been so many games coming out. And 3D in the title, so many movies step up yeah. to the streets. And 3D yeah. step up 3D movies yeah. that use numbers. I, I just it's, assumed it was a. Tr I mean, it's 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 really unfortunate. I think the one thing I will say about it, even though I have no interest in it, <laughs> was that it took an interesting sort of spin on the original. Like mm. the original was about the mother looking yes. for her daughter in Silent Hill. It was a terrible, terrible mo movie. I mm -hmm. like Rita Mitchell quite a bit, but still a terrible movie. Yes. This is actually from the daughter's perspective. Like she's trying to get away from all this stuff as she grows up, and she's sort of sucked back into mm -hmm. it. Granted, it's really you know cliches are trying to do you know the classic throw 3d things yep. at you type movie horror yep. movie but you know that's the one thing i'm hanging my hat yes. on this movie i will say that they have a complete release with this thing they have the blu-ray 3d the blu-ray the dvd the digital copy ultraviolet all five formats wow. in one umbrella but there's like no special features at all. The it's, only it's like that's the only special feature they had was to release it on all those formats. <laughs> Literally the only thing I think that they have, and this is sort of a little nebulous since they don't want to really reveal it, mm -hmm. but it seems like the only thing is a feature called A Look Inside Silent Hill Revelation. And it's apparently like a few interviews intercut with the trailer or audio over the trailer, and it's like three minutes long. Ugh. Like that is it. Like talking about like funny and I feel like this film also went from theater to video it's so fast mm -hmm. that I didn't even notice it came yeah. out. Like it was, it was a blip on the radar. I, I, and while it's it's quite a maybe a misnomer or giving up too much credibility to the movie to call it mainstream, it's one of the very few mainstream films in which Sean Bean does not die. Really? Yeah. Yeah, wow, the whole true. Sean Bean dies attitude. Yeah, this is one of the few times that that Who doesn't happen. <laughs> Sean Bean, you know? yeah, yeah, living through it. So, um, finally, let's move right along to our last release of the week, and this is one that um, actually technically comes out the second of March, yes. which is a Saturday. Weird. I don't understand the Very rationale behind day. that. I mean, I guess yeah. they think kids can go any time of the day to pick it up or something. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't understand. Maybe it's gonna have some special like noon Walmart release because it probably they will. Can that's the only people that would want to see. But you know, we're talking <clears throat> Twilight Saga, Breaking Dawn, Part, part two. two. Yes. This is the final chapter uh -huh. of the Twilight series. Yep. It's M much uh, loved by its fans for its last huge fight scene, which didn't actually take place in the books. So the best part of the whole series in the films was made up just for the films. But they just also. Putting that they out. also do something with that fight sequence that ran. That was, yes, like yes, I'd sort of yeah. like slogged along through all the movies. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is this is okay. This is not the yes. worst thing I've seen. It's not that great, mm -hmm. but it's it is a film. Yes. Um, and <laughs> yes. finally, with that last fight scene, I was like, all right, I can get into this. And yes. then they do something that completely yes, ruined the it for me. To and it I, is. 
I was just like, what the fuck is this shit? Yep. Um, so, in terms yep. of this release, they have a seven-part making-of documentary, uh, including chapters like Rebirth, Renesma, The Cottage, The Gathering, The Field, The Battle. A lot of those, basically. Yeah. yeah. And Forever being the last one. So, I mean, if you're really into this film and this last book, mm -hmm. probably good for you. I think the making of it was pretty... Probably one of the weakest parts of the movie, since yeah. it was pretty cheesy. I, I think it's just weird that they... I mean, and this is probably because Stephanie Meyer's uh, inclusion into the series and, and uh, basically behind-the-scenes power, but there was they wanted to keep the child actor who played Renesmee like, mm. innocent, so they had a swear jar on set that they would fill up because no one was yeah, supposed to swear I, I, I around can't, I can't say that's the worst thing. I mean, in the world of Twilight, they've done far worse than that. <laughs> it's true. Like, uh, for example... The whole series. <laughs> uh, <laughs> We're not going to judge. Well, people, I am. People like Twilight. Uh, Send your hate mail to Greg. Please do. I'll tell you how you're wrong. <laughs> anyway, in terms of other featurettes, they have one called Two Movies at Once, discussing the yeah. making of two, which I think is kind of interesting. You know, They did that, obviously, with The Matrix back in the day, and Lord of the Waters, Rings, all that yeah. sort of stuff. So, I'm, I mean, I, 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 don't know, I don't know how much they've actually had anyone really discuss the process yeah. of doing that, and I think that's kind of an interesting yeah, topic. It's true. And there's an audio commentary from the director, Bill Condon, which is cool, but there's none of the cast doing audio commentaries, which seems like Pattinson a total way. get the hell out of I there. I think you're right. I think, <laughs> yeah. I mean, which is, I'm, I'm surprised. And without Pattinson, probably they didn't want to do anybody else. But, I mean, actually, you know, in some ways, I kind of would like to hear their sort of perspective on wrapping everything up, because this has been something that's like, I don't know, five, six years yeah. of their lives that and has been, been a significant portion of that. Yeah. So, I don't know. I just hope that, uh, much like how Twilight blew up out of nowhere, it just disappears back into the same nowhere equally as fast. I wouldn't. It won't happen, I but I would like to. That, yeah. it, it, for anything else, it'll be from the creators of, or brought to you by the people who made, or the next in the line like. There'll be all those for the next 10 years. I have a feeling it'll be there for a while. Yeah, I know. Anyway, uh, join us next time for a discussion of fairy tale movies mm -hmm. in honor of the release of Jack the Giant Slayer. Mm -hmm. As always, you can find us at MacGuffinPodcast.com, Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast, phone number 323-761-9842. We're on iTunes, we're on Blip.tv, we're on Miro, we're on Roku. You can check in and get glue and get some sticky badges to place on people. Right? That's what you do with them? Don't you play <laughs> yeah, that'd be it? fun. Yeah, sure. That's probably the best reason yet. <laughs> Leave us some reviews on iTunes, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll see you later. Can't stop me, I'm fired tonight. Magneto can't stop me, I'm a fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me, I'm fired tonight. It's tight, don't even try to buy the sound style. Mr. Spock can't stop me, I'm fired tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm fired tonight. The